You're watching The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the God. We are The Breakfast Club. We got a special guest back in the building, Miss Chrisette Michelle. Good Hello. morning, Chrisette. Good morning. Now, let's get right to it. Why'd you put your miscarriage online? We didn't have to see all that. Right. So, I mean, I had a lot of things happen over the last few months. Damn, Charlamagne, you going to start there? I mean, well, it's... Not good morning. We know what we're here for. Come on, we all grown. All right, go ahead. ahead, Continue. Yeah, so, I mean, I've been through a lot in the last few months. I've had PCOS for a long time, endometriosis for a long time. And stress causes flare-ups. And so I've had flare-ups over the last nine months from all the stress of everything that happened Mm -hmm. since January. And I just wanted people to know, because I feel like people wanted to know if I was affected. I think people wanted to know what I was experiencing because there were so many words that people had and I felt like maybe they don't know that I hear them. Maybe they don't know. So instead of coming out with a song right away or an album right away, I wanted to say, you know what, it's been tough. This is the stuff that I've been going through. And the next, you know, art that you hear from me is going to be about that. And that was, so, yeah. Was that a fake picture you posted online? It was they a real. They said that wasn't yours. It wasn't mine. I didn't, when I was, you know, when what was happening to me was happening to me, I didn't think to take a photo. I would hope not. <laughs> right, right. But but many women did. Mm-hmm. And many women post their photos on, you know, different websites to see what's going on in their body. And so I think that myself identifying with uh, somebody else's photo, I wanted people to know the severity of what I experienced. And so I put something up to show it. Um, I didn't want it to fall on deaf ears because it seems like a lot of women's issues in general, mental health in general, anxiety, stress, that type of stuff, women's bodies in general falls on deaf ears often. And I just couldn't let this be a moment where I just let it fall on deaf ears. And, you know, until you've been through a miscarriage, do you know, you can't really tell somebody how to deal with it. Mm -hmm. But me sort of coming clean about it was important. Do you know whose fetus it was that you posted? Um, at first I didn't, uh, but the person who fetus it was posted it publicly. I found out later. I mean, obviously, the, mm-hmm. every, every single p- picture for maybe the last 40 posts on my Instagram aren't mine. So I, I always post things that aren't mine. The Patti LaBelle photo that I have on my Instagram isn't mine. Do you know, um, people post things from the internet all the time on their Instagram. I think people just assumed because you were talking about all these personal things that when you posted that picture but even before the xanax you, photo wasn't mine either right, that wasn't even, just, those weren't your xannies all xanax look alike mm. but even before you got to that you talk about a lot of stress and things that you went through yeah and suffering and having suicidal thoughts yeah so you posted that in order because first you said you got dropped well that's the last thing that was I the said, last yeah thing. okay so mm-hmm. the last thing was that you got dropped but you were having suicidal thoughts mm-hmm. do you feel like all the stress from everything you're saying that you believe that led to your miscarriage Definitely. Um, so I had an, I don't know if we talked about this together, but I had an ovary removed a few years ago. And like literally the stress of just being an artist sometimes is a lot. Mm. But the stress of, you know, Trump becoming the president, and the stress of me being so associated with someone who I don't support, and then the stress of the hatred online, and then the stress of, you know, me wondering if I ever wanted to sing again. Do you know? Um, I think that that had a lot to do with the stress on my body. Do you regret even performing for his inauguration? I regret everything that happened. I think mm. that was a bad choice. We told you not to I know, do it, I, Yeah, I was going to say, I know you guys were like, well, after the fact. But I know you guys were like, Chrisette, that's crazy. But a lot of times when you have a message of hope, a lot of times when you have a message of healing, you think, you know, maybe it's a self-righteous thing. Um, maybe it's a mistake to feel that way. But you think, man, if I just tell people everything's going to be okay, they'll hear me. Because I've been doing that for years. Mm-hmm. So I just thought that the amount of times I've done it. When I sing my own music, right, and then I sing a gospel song in my concerts, those are usually the songs that get the most response. Mm-hmm. So I just thought that bringing that to that moment where everybody was hurting, including myself, would be helpful. And I was wrong, and I offended a lot of people. Yeah, because Donald Trump has gotten progressively worse. So being that he's gotten progressively worse, it makes everybody who kind of like, stood by him in the beginning it, it just justifies what everybody was saying like they, we told you oh i knew that he wasn't yeah. i knew that he wasn't a good choice for the presidency that was something we all knew together but there's always got to be some sense of hope again that stage that message on that stage was the wrong time in the wrong place um and i apologize deeply for the people that i hurt there are a lot of people who have a lot of hateful things to say mm-hmm. and i think those people think that you know, that's the only way to voice what they have to say. But there are a lot of people who had a lot of pain. And, you know, when I was able to come back to the Internet, because it took me a minute, you know, you can't just throw yourself into hatred. You just can't. It's not it's not healthy for a human being, maybe for a, a, a troll or something like that. That's where they live. But I can't live there. That's why I don't have it on my phone anymore. 
I got. Well, every, I took everything off my phone except Instagram. That's awesome. Well, Instagram is where a lot where of it But you can choose. You got to really go out of your way to read comments on Instagram. No, you, no, you With don't. Twitter, you just open it and it's just boom. It's right there. But, you know, it's it's also hard because being that people were giving you like the, and I'm sure you didn't anticipate the hatred that you would get. No, from- and, and I, well, when I did reality TV, there was a lot of hatred. When I, long millions of years ago, when I did something else, I don't know if anybody remembers, but there was hatred then. Um, you know, so I know that people can be hateful. But this was next level. But this, yeah, this was next level, and I couldn't handle it. But then you did post some very personal things. Now, what has the response yeah. been like since then? Yeah, put some lotion on your head. Because they're going to hate on you for that, too. Is she ashy? I can tell. Yeah, she ashy. I didn't even mm-hmm. notice. There you go. But, so um, I'm saying that has to be difficult, too, because then now you know you've opened the door why? back up for people to comment and have things to say. So how has that response been since you talked about... I'm sorry. I know. <laughs> I'm sorry. Your suicidal how has thoughts. that response been? Oh, yeah, my God. Have. Well, I mean, first of all, I'm receiving a crap load of emails from people who have the same thoughts who have had the same thoughts and have told me, and this brings me to tears and I hate to cry, but you know, I think that mental health and mental illness in the black community is something that we shy away from. That's a fact. And when I was on reality TV, I was the first person to say, we need to bring therapy to reality television to show people, black people getting healing through, through, through therapy. And so the amount of women that have had miscarriages and the amount of young men and women black young men and women who have suicidal thoughts and who have I mean the stories in my and the stories on my Instagram too um you know you see a lot of the hate but then you see a lot of humans with real experiences and real stories and that response is overwhelming and it lets me know that maybe it's time for me to start sharing myself and not just love songs mm-hmm. you know? well you know what the, the sad the, the sad thing about it is miscarriages are very common you know they they say I think like one in every th- Third pregnancy, there's a miscarriage of like three million people a year. And I didn't but, know but, that. But you know, people don't talk about it. That's yeah. why that's the thing. Some people have miscarriages right. and never even knew they were pregnant. Right. Too. So miscarriages right. are, are, are frequent. And and, it, would, and it's, it brings a lot of shame. So all this sh- shame that these one in three women or whatever it I is, I believe it's one in three. Yeah. That these people, uh, these women are walking around with this shame. And I, so you know, I'm torn between. Gosh, is is it for you guys to shame me right now? Is it or is it for us to say this is something people go through? So I know that from the backlash from January, you get to say, oh, those are the consequences, and those are the comments too. But the other side is, damn, there's a lot of people who go through this and they feel terrible, and maybe I can be a voice for them. Now I'm so, sure I'm sure you're getting more backlash now for posting a, a miscarriage that wasn't yours, though, because a lot of people would be like, damn, you're really reaching for attention. I don't. I don't know if I've ever been known to reach for attention, but that's what it seemed like, though. But but if I'm a girl who's talked about having PCOS in magazines, I mean, I don't know if that was for attention. Do you know? If I was a girl who talked about endometriosis, and if I'm a girl who had this miscarriage, and this is the only way that people can hear it, you know, sometimes on Instagram, people just hear things if you show them. Do you know? Oftentimes, people, if we're talking about percentages, there's a large percentage of people who don't read in general period, because they can't. So sometimes showing people things in pictures and saying, this happened to me, do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I don't think it would have been enough just to say I had a miscarriage. I wanted people to see what that looked like. And until you have a miscarriage, you won't identify with that anyway. Do you know what I mean? So no matter who you are, if this is not one of your one in three people that, mm-hmm. that have had this experience, then then you can identify with a, a, a picture of a miscarriage. How did people find you, out it wasn't yours? The no person idea. posted a picture. The person whose it was posted a picture, reposted it. Oh. But I think with you, I think a lot of people don't necessarily believe a lot because they feel like even with the Trump thing, they felt like a lot of it was to get attention, you know, because it felt like she was doing it for the money. Like you needed the money. That's why you did it. So my thing with people like Questlove, who said, you know, you needed the money. If if Questlove has my phone number, Mm -hmm. if I needed the money, why didn't you call me and say, yo, sis, are you good? Do you know what I mean? I, I just came off a 32 city tour before that. And then I was finishing up an 18 city tour after that. I've never been strapped for performances. And the $750,000 and the $250,000, like these were all made up numbers that people made up. Whenever I have a microphone in front of me and I'm singing, I'm getting paid. That's how I make a living. Mm -hmm. So every time I'm performing, it's to be paid. That's not new. That's not strange. Do you feel like a lot of people you thought you were cool with that knew you personally kind of turned their backs on you? Not personally, but people, fans who I thought, 
I they had to. I thought they saw Chrisette goes to Iraq and sings for the troops. I thought they saw Chrisette at the Congressional Black Caucus. I thought they saw Chrisette at the Democratic National Convention supporting supporting Obama in two thousand eight, two thousand twelve. I thought they saw me at the NWACP. They did it. They I thought, yeah, but then right, they saw you next and to so Trump. Right. right, but it but it was t- it was ten years of that message, and then one moment where I said, okay, guys, like I know we're hurting the same girl from the NWACP stuff and the, all that, the same girl. We're hurting. I want to be there to console. And I did it with somebody. And we sang a song that wasn't mine because I didn't think that singing, you know, a couple of forevers or, or a love song was was the right thing. But I thought that saying that everything's going to be all right was the right thing to say. I did. And I was wrong. And that is something I'm comfortable admitting. But it took me a long time again to sit there and look at that people were really hurting. How, how has it affected your business? <clears throat> are, are, they, are you still getting booked? Are people still coming to your shows? Or Yeah, and that was another thing that was confusing is you go to a show and people are singing every word and they're, you know, clapping their hands and, the, you know, everybody's at the door waiting when, when, this, when the doors open. And so you're saying, <clears throat> wow, you know, there are these people who have been supportive for a long time mm-hmm. and they're here. And then there's these people on the Internet who absolutely, you know, have horrible, horrible words you know, where's the connection? Well, you know the rule of 10. Three, the rule of 10 is three people going to like it, three people not going to like it, and four people just going to be on the fence about it. Right, and and that's a wonderful point. Mm-hmm. I don't think people get that point. And that's why you talk to everybody when you come to realizations. Do you know? So you might talk to CNN when you come to one realization. And then you might talk to, you know, Roland Martin when you come to another one. And then mm-hmm. you might come and talk to The Breakfast Club, which truthfully is the hardest conversation because these are my younger brothers and sisters who call me on the phone and say, you know, Big Sis, what's up? I have a mentorship program, and they're hitting me like, Chris with Big Sis, what's up? Do you know? And they're where my heart lies. They don't necessarily buy all of the music, but they watch me as a role model. Do you know? And so this is the most painful conversation because I'm what young people have to look up to, you know, as as a, as a big sister. Is it hurtful when, you know, you post about the miscarriage, you post about getting dropped, you post about wanting to commit suicide, and then people say good for you because you shouldn't have performed for Trump? I, oh, I didn't see that. Oh, of course. Are you it's, crazy? It's ad nauseum. Um, Damn. Yeah, so, yeah, that's hurtful. I, I think that's that would be hurtful in general. And what I try to do with all my might is see why they're really saying it because I know nobody wants me to have a miscarriage. That can't possibly be the case. I, I want to believe that people are inherently good, and I keep telling myself, that's what I've been telling myself the last nine months, is people are inherently good. I just got to wait for them to to heal Mm -hmm. and i might not be the one to heal them do you know what i mean i might not be the one with the right song or the right message to say we're gonna get through this together but you know i understand that people are hurting what's the bounce back for you from all of this now how do you move forward is it i know you have new music out Mm -hmm. a strong black woman are you on you're not on def jam anymore right i'm on rich hipster which is my, my own label. But you did say so, you got dropped from the label. Right. So, so that was Capital Caroline, you said. Right. Yeah. So Rich Hipster, or RH, got signed to Ca- Capital for a distribution deal. So um, in order to release music, you don't have to have a distribution deal. You can still be an independent artist on your own record label. Mm-hmm. So moving forward, I'll put out music independently. And yeah. okay, I'm sorry. While, while it's painful that that happened... Do you know, maybe this will be the the time in my career where I can take the narrative back. Mm-hmm. Do you know, uh, many years ago I put out a song called, uh, an album and a song called Let Freedom Reign. And the, the record label said, well, this is a cool art project. Do you know what I mean? So maybe now it'll be more than an art project that I put out. Did maybe they drop be... you because of the Trump stuff? That's what I want to know. So, you know, and you guys are in the industry. So when you get dropped from a label, they don't say uh, you weigh 222 pounds and your mother wears army boots and we don't want to p- work with you anymore. Mm-hmm. Do they say... People get dropped for being fat? <laughs> they don't say that. That's what I'm she saying. Said, oh, they don't what? say that. Oh, I was like, what? There's all well, kinds of reasons that people get dropped. Oh, yeah. Oh, I feel you're saying they don't tell you They don't tell you the right. Okay, got you, got yeah. you, got you. Yeah. And so, you know, they're not going to say you know, because of your participation in the inauguration, we don't want to be a part. But I mean, some things are kind of obvious. I've They'll never be been, like, I've never been dropped part ways before because we feel like this partnership isn't isn't going good in the right direction. Yeah, good luck, maybe. You know, 
This is how I really feel like that. This is why I, I kind of think Donald Trump's the Antichrist. And the reason I say that is because everybody who tried to be cordial with him, made a deal with the devil, so to speak, has taken some type of hit, whether it was you, whether it was, uh, I saw an article about my guy Steve Harvey yesterday. Um, mm. What's the young lady, what's the Mary? What's the Mary and Mary Mary? Tina she, Campbell. So, but she supported Trump. I, while I don't knock anybody for what they decide. Ray Lewis, I want to throw that out there. I just wish people would hear when people were talking. So if you say, hi, I support Trump, then you can have a conversation you about that. You weren't in the Trump campaign. No. If you can say, hi, you don't like me, but I didn't support Trump, let's have that conversation. Say, you shouldn't even been near him. Say, it hurt me to see you in that space. And that's, say, there was the Steve Harvey situation. I saw that they said the ratings for his show that he's doing in Hollywood now have been really bad. Because they say he lost a lot of his uh, black fan base. Mm -hmm. And Tina, I think Tina just lost people when she said that Trump had Christ-like values. Now, I ain't no religious person, but yeah, I ain't gonna see I nothing read, about Christ. I read the interviews. Yeah. I think that maybe, maybe, and I don't know everything that they've said, but I think it's important to say sorry. I think it's important to say, damn, that was, that was, that was a bad idea. <laughs> that's you the know? biggest takeaway I've gotten from this whole conversation with you. You You're are wrong. admitting You're you like, were wrong. Yeah. It's fine. That's, that's fine. Now, I, I think that's great. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and for whatever it's worth, do you know what I mean? There may be people who accept that and there may be people that don't. But at the end of the day, it's the end of it's a part of my healing to just get it off. Because I've wanted to say, oh, my God, that was some really. But she, I, I just my publicist and my people were like, you don't tweet that. Like, that's not a tweet. That's a conversation. That's where you go and sit behind a microphone. And I'm calling my mom. I'm like, Mom, do you think there's a way for me to, like, put out a post that says I apologize or whatever? And, you know, everybody's waiting for this big moment. So finally, I was just like, you know what? If people are on Instagram and that's where they're listening, if people are on Twitter and that's where they're listening, if people are on Facebook and that's where they're listening, I'm just going to go there. I've spent these many years building two million people on my Facebook following. Just put it out. And that was awkward. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Because... We, we talk about a lot, why do you put certain things on social media that are so important? But I'm not a publicist. I said before, I'm not a political genius. I'm not a, 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 a journalist. I'm just Chris from New York. This was my experience. And right now I got Instagram. Mm -hmm. All right. But see, that, that'd be the problem. Your captions be too long. Because I'd be reading them. And I see, you, I see you feel regret for meeting with Trump and all of that. I, I, didn't, meet, I didn't meet with Trump. I never met Trump. Performing at his inauguration. Performing at his inauguration. Mm -hmm. right. I see you have regret for that, but I can't get through all of that. I read all minutes. of it. I did, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and this, this is the truth. picture is too much. The truth of the matter is there are people who will read it, mm -hmm. and there are people who won't. I'm the type of person that will read all of it. Right. Yeah, because there are bloggers, there are podcasters, there are, there are all different types of writers. There's Roxanne Gay. You know, there's all different types of ways people put their art out there. And for the people who appreciate my writing, I put that there. For the people who don't read, I put a picture. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I knew that dynamic. I knew that there would be people who don't read this, but I want them to at least know what I experienced. This is what it looked like. Now, Krista, you said for a period of time you thought you didn't even want to make music at I all. I didn't want to live. You didn't so want to live. How did you pull music. yourself out of that? Because, like you said, there are a lot of people suffering from all these issues, mental health issues, suicidal thoughts, yeah. things that you've gone through. What did you do to help heal yourself and pull yourself out of that? Well, one thing I can't stand about myself in general sometimes is that I'm always singing. It's like no matter what, there's a lyric in my head and I, and I write it down. Do you know? So that was part of it. And I, I won't release some of the music that I wrote because, you know, it's very personal. But the other part was my husband, he, he sent me to this yoga retreat here in New York City. And it was 200 hours. I was there every day for 30 days. And I finally got quiet. I was away from all the social media, away from all the stuff. And, um, Your brain was still. My brain was still. There was a lot of meditation. And in that time, I just had time to be reflective. And there was this thing that we say in yoga, namaste, mm -hmm. where it means essentially the light in me sees the light in you. And when I thought about the idea that there's light in everybody, I tried to find it, even in the people who were mean, even the people who said hurtful things, and just see maybe where they're coming from. I went to a lot of people's feeds, and like if they said something terrible, just looked and saw what their life might look like on Instagram. You did all that? I did because I wanted to like do the yoga thing, do you know? Because right. everything else, I won't say any names, wasn't working. Mm -hmm. But on the flip side, you know, people can look at you and we didn't know what you were going through the past few months. Which is like, why I told you. Yeah, we might have thought your life was great. But Which like, is why I told yeah. you. And I think a lot of my mistake in general with my community is that I don't talk enough. I feel like you I'm talking when you talk. you and, and I whisper when I talk, <laughs> but you know, I feel like if I'm going to meet this man, I'm going to talk to this person that people know that I'm talking, but they don't. And so sometimes you got to get real, you got to get personal and you got to 
Show your truth. And the truth of the matter is, is while there was so much hurt and, and anger and mean things said, I was more relieved to see people who went through what I went through and have something to share, mm-hmm. common ground. Now, serious question. What's better, yoga or Xanax? Honestly. Well, you can get to the same space with yoga, and that's what I kind of learned with mm-hmm. yoga. I had asked my therapist for years, I was like, is there something else besides, you know, medication? I have ADD too, so there's Ritalin for that. But I was, I went vegan. I was vegan for four years to get rid of uh, ADHDs. I just didn't want to not be able to think straight, do you know. But yoga, you can get to the same mental space. And that'd be fuzzy because I assume that Xanax also, like when you're coming off of it, it makes you feel a little bit fuzzy. No, I'd say that about alcohol. Oh, about alcohol? Yeah. But I, I think that yoga, like you'll feel different, just your whole head feels really clear. Oh, I see. Yeah, no, you're, you have a new perspec- perspective on life it's in general. It's so much clarity. Like you yeah. walk out and you're like, oh. Yeah, before you take a Xanax, you don't like set an intention, meditate a little, and then pop a Xanny. And, and throw some future on. No, yeah, oh that's goodness. not necessarily how So how are you now? Where, what's your mind set now? Right now, um, I'll be honest, I have a, like a a deeper relationship with my fans than I realized. Mm-hmm. And they know me a little bit better than I thought in as much as I've spent time with them in person, you know, with performances. And so I kind of just want to not take that for granted this time. When I say that, I mean, if I love a fan, I want to say I love a fan. I don't want to, like, try and have this fine line between it because that fine line is what makes you say, uh, oh, well, people are always mean on Twitter, so I'll just do what I think anyway. Mm -hmm. Do you know? Or people are always, you know, saying horrible things on Instagram, so let me just follow my gut. You know, now I think I might want to say, this is what I'm going through. This is the art behind it. What are you going through? Do you know what I mean? And it'd be more of a dialogue than a celebrity talking to people who appreciate her art. And you probably appreciate them more because the ones that stood by He's you still here. in this moment. Well, that's why that's why more. that's why I chose and I hate to talk about music at a time like this, but a lot of the album is kind of sad or about social injustice or just very like, you know, almost uh so you have activisty. An album yeah, out. in in no 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 in um in uh, uh, April. Yeah. April. And and I I was going to come out with a song kind of like talking about all this stuff, all the stuff I went through, the state of my mind, the state of confusion I was in. And instead, I wanted to talk to the fans who stuck by me. And I call them strong black women. So that's why I came up with that song first. Um, It's hard to decide how to come out with music or when in a moment like this, because music is how I express myself. Um, I needed to sing my way through this experience to people who only hear me in, in music. But to the people who hear my words, I've decided to write more, Mm -hmm. make longer captions, show my actual experience, talk about what I do appreciate in the world. I don't think people know how much I love certain things and certain experiences. That's why I have an entire timeline now of of women who I love and appreciate because I'm kind of just tired of trying to be a celebrity. Do you know? Is your family fucking with you now? Because I know you said your family kind of disowned you. (laughs) Is my Jesus disowned you? Have worded that better. (laughs) Jesus, right? So fuck with you anymore? Is it true? Does your mama still love you? (laughs) Well, well, it it wasn't the truth. And every time somebody says, I say, can you please find the article where you read that? Um, So my family's always effed with me. I said that my (laughs) yeah, I said that my aunts were petrified. Mm -hmm. I said that my family was nervous. But when you call a mom, and I have this mom, I have this Brooklyn mom who wore the long skirts and the prayer scarf on her head Mm -hmm. and no makeup and no earrings. You know, the ones that are still all Friday night, six hour prayer. Those people would go to the White House right now and get on their face before God and and pray for 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 what's next. So when I said, Mom, I'm going to go to sing a song and tell people everything's going to be all right and lift up the name of the Lord. It wasn't a, oh, Chrissy, you can't do that. It was a, this is what we do as Christians. Gotcha. Do you know? So, yeah, they are, and they're proud of me. But I'm saying to them now, all right, it's cool, this whole Christian thing's epic, but it, sometimes it's got to be more than, and this is what I learned a lot, sometimes it's got to be more than all things are working for my good. Sometimes it's got to be, this is how we're going to get to the next place. Right. Instead of saying you're going to be all right, show me how to be all right. And so I think that's my biggest takeaway is you can't just stand anywhere and tell people everything's fine. You also no, had no. a conversation with Roland Martin. Yeah. Right. So you guys, um, I guess he had some critical things to say, but then you guys spoke 
And uh, he and I guess are you gonna do a sit down or? So yeah, he tweeted me a couple of days ago, and I'm getting tired of celebrities tweeting me. And then mm-hmm. when they have my number, um, Girl, I got your number. Everybody has my number. There's, it's very easy. People in Africa have my number. When we went through <laughs> oh, the. When we went, I'll give you guys my number after this. I got a a, a husband's number. After this, (laughs) and then whenever y'all see me doing something crazy, Pick up the phone and call me. I can't have you anti-Reese in my phone. That's just too much. Anti what? That's a lot. You and Tyrese do a lot. <laughs> no, but the prob- uh, all problem is, is that there's a lot of people. Yeah, Tyrese. Um, there's a lot of people who have a lot of knowledge. And I'm not going to use the work woke phrase, but there's just people who are older than me. I'm a millennial. So there are people who are the generation before that who might have, have things to share with me. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of the next album is about that, but you know, picking up the phone and saying to somebody, "Yo, sis, this is let me kick some knowledge to you," is not a bad thing. Mm-hmm. So, so when Roland Martin tweeted me, I was like, "Can we sit down and talk? I would love to speak with somebody of your political expertise." He's older than me by thirty or forty years. He knows more than I do, and so yeah, we sat down yesterday um, on TV One and mm-hmm. had a conversation. Now, I have to ask you this because, you know, I feel like God is watching over all of this, and I feel like honesty is the only thing that can get you out of this space. Did you really have a miscarriage? Yeah. Yeah, and... Don't lie, Christian. No. Why are you like she made that up? No, well, he's not, the, he's not the only person yeah. who is asking that, I'm guessing. I mean, I, again, I can't look at everything. But, yeah. You know God is watching? Let, let's, and let's really quickly, because... If you want to fuck with me after this, do. If you don't want to fuck with me after this, don't. But when a woman goes through a miscarriage, she has that experience. You cannot tell her how to deal with it. You cannot tell her how to handle it. I've seen women commit suicide over having miscarriages. I know that what I've experienced is something that could have drove me further over the edge. Mm-hmm. I know that I could have been somewhere where no one would have six feet under. So while I respect you asking because you, your audience is asking, I don't know that I'm going to address that anymore. That happened. It was painful. I shared it. And that's all there is to it. Yeah. What made you What made you want to, what drove you to the edge more? Was it the miscarriage? Was it the Trump backlash? Was it the getting dropped from the label or just a combination of all three? I think it was the miscarriage because I I literally just got married, like literally. And the first thing you think of when you get married is I'm going to give this man a baby. Mm. So now I have this man who marries me, loves me, manages me, and pulls me through that backlash. And then I'm finding like, man, I got something to give him. You know what I mean? Like it's like that moment. It, it would have been his first child, would have been my first child. I have something to give him. And then, and then you know, you don't. Um, You're going to try again, though, I'm sure. I mean, we try every day. Every day. There you go. <laughs> no condoms. There you go. Uh, and the, the, the best thing I think we could take away from this conversation, Chrisette, I think you need to look at that camera and just tell everybody you were wrong. Well, her name is Chrisette. Not Chrisette, Chrisette. What did I say? Yeah. Chrisette. Her name is Chrisette. It's his list. He Chrisette. can't help it. Uh, yeah, a lot of yeah. people say that. Chrisette. I just think well, you should tell everybody, look, I was wrong Chrisette. for meeting with Trump. Mm-hmm. Y'all were right. That's that. Y'all were right. No, <laughs> seriously. Yeah, that's, the, that's, that's what people want. I think people would move on after yeah, they hear that. Yeah, they want the honesty, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what will make people move on, but hey, it's your girl Chrisette, and I made a bad decision. Oh, I made a, a bad decision. I did something that hurt a lot of people. It was offensive, and while that wasn't my intention, it's what happened. And for that, I'm deeply sorry. You live and you learn. Yeah, you if y'all keep learn. beating up on her after that, then y'all just evil people. They yeah, were well, people, people are evil. That's anyway. all. Yeah. All right. Well, there you have it. Thank you for joining us, Chrisette. And being Thank honest. you guys for having me. Appreciate all right, it. and being open. It's The Breakfast Club. It's Miss Chrisette Michelle.